Record. There you go. How you do anything is how you do everything. Okay. Write that down on the top of your page. All right. Let me get into this. So um, this call, as I mentioned before, is going to be a reminder. And we're going to rock through this. Um, I hope you guys are ready. As I just stated before, um, I'm going to encourage you. And it's not even like encouragement at this point. Like I am encouraging you. But and, and, and I don't want this to seem like very tedious of like, why are we always harping on this? Because it's how you do anything. It's how you do everything. And I know some of y'all at work. I get it. But I'm going to say this. And I don't, I don't know if this is you. But I'm going to tell you, we, like, we can't keep operating in this way. Okay? Um, I used, I, like, when I first got started, I remember we had leadership calls. And I didn't take them seriously for whatever reason. And I remember we would have these calls and it would be at a time like, it would be like later. So I would like, I'm an early bird. Like I would go, or yeah, I'm an, I'm an early bird. I get up in the morning, but I go to bed early and the calls were later at night and I would go to sleep. So I'm only saying this because I have been in that mentality before where I would have my zoom on and the call would be going on, but I would be in my bed. This was like when I really like the very first like few months that I got started um, when I was doing this. And I'm only saying that because I realized how much that put me back in the mindset and like why that's actually hurting me. One, because I wasn't paying attention for obvious reasons. But two, like, how can we expect to like, look, all these calls are they're preparing you. They're they're literally setting you up to to be this person like you to switch places with me and you have your own team and you're leading them. But how I can't show up to Mike Sotero's calls if he's doing individual leadership. I'm not, this isn't even like what the, what the call's about, but, and I'm like, every time I'm not like engaging, my camera's off, I'm not paying attention. I'm not, I'm not focused, like so many other things. And so I don't want to talk about this anymore, but I, I know that the first, the first form that I sent out to you guys on there, it's, it explicitly said, turn your camera on. Don't get lazy. That's like, that's what I'm saying. Don't get lazy. Don't get complacent. Don't just come here. I appreciate you guys for getting up in the morning um, and being on these calls. Like these are for you. But at the same time, like understand that this, like you're only going to give yourself, like you're only going to allow yourself to go so far based on the actions that you're taking right now, based on the things that you are very intentional about. Okay. So I want to start off with a couple questions uh, for you. Um, this is, you don't need to type in the chat. This is for you. But did you follow through this week on what you set out for yourself? I know last week we covered DMOs. You should have written out your DMOs for the week. What are those, you know, four things or so that that you're doing um, specifically based around the business and obviously like your life as a whole. But you should have had um, written out like your your DMOs. Did you follow through on those this week? Yes or no. Um, and then the other question is, and we talked about this last night, which I think is a really powerful question is what red light story did you tell yourself this week? If you, if you did not, let's say, follow through on all of your, uh, DMOs, why, what red light story? And this isn't to call anybody out. Like, oh, I want, and I said this last week, you know, I want to make you feel bad. You know, you should feel bad about yourself. It has nothing to do with that. This has everything to do with facing the truth like getting real. You're going to continue to have those limiting beliefs about yourself. You're going to continue to set plans. You know, we marry these plans, we marry our goals and so on and so forth. But when it comes time to actually do the work, like we let our feelings get in the way. We let our limiting beliefs stop us. We have this lid over our heads and that's like what is holding us back. And so I, sh I ask these questions, uh, questions and I say what I say, not to like shame anybody. Like that's not what I'm doing on these calls. It's to get you to think. It's to get you to like uncover and reveal like, why am I like not doing these? Why am I not doing this consistently? Like, what is that limiting belief that keeps holding me down? That like, is literally strangling me. Like I can't, I can't move forward. What is that? And I want you guys to get clear on that. Did you follow through on your set of DMOs? What is that? What did that look like? And if you didn't, what red light story did you tell you about yourself this week? Okay. To a T there's, there's like three or four things that I'm sure you wrote down. Did you follow them and just get real about the red light story? And maybe it's the same red light story that you have for the next four weeks. But every time you look to uncover it, every time you look to just acknowledge it, you're going to find out something a little bit more about you that you didn't know before. 
before like you actually started to pay attention to it. Because now you don't have a personal attachment. I don't want to be like redundant of last week, but I'm going to say it again. Like now, every time you look to it, you don't have a personal attachment. It's like, um, whenever I look at, sometimes when I look at my back office, like sometimes I just don't want to look at my back office because I don't want to see what I like, what I know is there. But every time I go to look at it, I like that personal attachment removes itself, the emotional ties to like, oh man, like, you know, blah, blah, blah. This is what's going on. Like, I don't have that attachment anymore. Same thing. Like, you know, if you were to check your bank account or whatever, like sometimes, you know, I know I've definitely been there before where I'm like, I definitely don't want to look to see what's in there. But like every time I go to go to look, I remove the attachment that I have. And I actually empower myself when I do to be like, all right, here's the real deal. I remove the blind spots of like what I want to see, what I think, um, you know, what I what like the self judge, not the self judgment, like, um, like we tell ourselves this lie, like we tell ourselves self justification. That's what I'm trying to say. Like we justify things. And that's what's going on when we don't face the truth is we just kind of put things under the rug and we justify it. It's like, how much longer are we going to live like this where we're not like doing the things that we told ourselves? So um, successful people, I want, to, I want to read you this quote, successful people do daily what un, what unsuccessful people do occasionally. And that's really all you need on this call. Like we could stop right there. And that's really all, all you could take away from this call because that's all you need. Like if you just hear that successful people do daily what unsuccessful people do occasionally, then you will know what like, then you will really understand like, man, this is why I am not where I want to be. Or this is why I'm, I'm you know, I'm, I'm right here uh, where I've always been or whatever the case is. And, and it's very simple. Like the successful things, like we know, it's literally just doing the mundane, laborious stuff over and over and over again, regardless of how we feel, regardless of our circumstances, regardless of the chaos and the BS and the stories that we tell ourselves, it's doing the thing day in, day out, no matter what. I don't know who, who needs this reminder today, but it's literally doing those things at, like every day, every day. Repetition is the major key to all learning and understanding. What is the key to all learning and understanding? Re repetition and emotional involvement, getting in, emotionally involved with the things that you're doing, like bringing enthusiasm and excitement I know it's not all like I don't I know it's not like that all the time, but you have to train yourself and self motivate self coach yourself in, in like in those mundane activities just by recognizing like, yep, the activities that I'm do are not going to be like fun and exciting. Um, majority of the time, they're actually going to be very, quote unquote, boring, quote unquote, mundane. It just sets the right expectations for when I actually go to do the work. It's like, yep, I already know how this is going to be. I already know how long this is going to take me. I already know the duration of like, you know, where I'm going with this. And like the end goal, it's kind of like leading a conversation. I know where I'm taking them. I know, like, I know the questions that I'm going to ask them. Like, I know the direction that we're going. I know the direction of the task uh, and where they're going to take me. I know, like, by this time that I start, by this time is usually when I'm going to end. And a great point, I'll, I'll shout out Marin. She was on our, our call last night um, talking about, you know, having conversations. This is kind of a side note, but when um, we were talking about, you know, finding people and things like that and, and I really appreciate her for, for bringing this up. Maybe some of you guys also experience this as well, but just kind of like going through that experimentation and trial process um, of finding the right pages, finding the right people that you're going to follow and, you know, um, add people from and, and start conversations through. Sometimes maybe you need to go through that trial period, that er that experimentation period where you're just trying to find the right place to find quality people and maybe you don't know that right away and maybe that's why it's so frustrating but if you like it's all about expectation if you set the expectation for cool I'm going to take the next week I'm going to take the next couple of weeks or whatever to find like get in the groove of finding the right page that I want to find people from um, and I'm, I'm going to find posts that actually have higher numbers on the on like the shares or the likes or whatever because I'm going to give myself more of an opportunity more of a chance to actually talk to not only people <laughs> that are there but higher quality people that actually like I want to work with that are my ideal recruit and so on and so forth. And you don't get to that level of awareness until you ask questions and you don't get to asking different types of questions until you do the work, uh, doing the work. And then looking back and reflecting has given me the opportunity to see things from such a new perspective that I never would have seen before if I didn't do it consistently. All these things, maybe, you know, 
um, but we're just like not doing. Okay, so successful people do daily what unsuccessful people do occasionally. When you do the work consistently, you begin to realize things that you never even saw before. You never even knew was there. Because now like you're getting into a groove, like you do something consistently over and over again, you start to find things out that you did you wouldn't have realized if you just scratched the surface and only did it once a week, only did it occasionally, only did it when you felt like it, okay? What happens is your level of awareness increases. And this has literally been the main thing that they, like we've literally been talking about for the last couple of weeks, especially since leaving the event in Orlando, like raising your level of awareness. And, and your understanding is how you change your paradigm. That's where we're going with this. So like we we know what to do, but we're not doing it. There's a there's a scripture for what I want to do. I do or sorry for what I want to do. I do not do. But what I hate, I do. I resonate with that, man. For what I want to do, I do not do. But what I hate, I do. I think Paul said that or something in the Bible. Don't don't quote me. I'm not there yet on all that stuff, but I know some stuff. So that that scripture is very powerful because I feel like it's the uh the theme of many of our lives is we we know what we should be doing but we don't do it or we don't do it consistently. And we we get to this point, you know, I'm not going to bring out the story and the long drawn out story, but like that's kind of the repetition of our life and like that's the repetition in our results. And so we want to be increasing our level of awareness. And we and when we do that, we're like subconsciously little by little. You guys know the compound effect, right? Like you guys seen the chart where it literally looks like this. And then all of a sudden it goes like that, you know, like this. Like that. You're like here. But you always will stay here if we're not consistent, right? It's like every day I can, I can put a penny, you know, penny doubled over 30 days, you know, whatever, whatever the case is, right? Um, we never will get to that change, that, um, that involvement in ourselves if we're not consistent. Y'all get my point, okay? So when I choose, when I choose, when you choose to step outside of your comfort zone and you push, you push just a little longer, okay? In some scenarios, you're, you're like you're doing the work, but you want to give up because you in your head, you're you're like your mind is telling you this is not working. It's like the devil talking to you like this is never going to work. Um, You know, these are your limiting beliefs like, you know, can you really do this? This is going nowhere. I know you all have these thoughts like I have these thoughts. Let me know if y'all are with me. Um, But if you get outside your comfort zone, just you, you stretch like how do you build muscle? You stretch a little bit longer. Like you have to actually like tear the muscle. You're going to go through some pain. You guys heard this, heard these stories before. You have to get outside your comfort zone. You have to push yourself a little longer. When you do that, when you go the little bit, the little bit, it's the little bit, it's the inches. When you do that and you do that every time you go a little bit, just a little bit, you will realize things about yourself that you did not realize, like you, that you did not even know before. You will realize things about yourself that you had no idea was there before. It's kind of like if you're doing a workout and greatest example I can give is push-ups. Okay. And you're doing um, push-ups. Okay. And you, and you push yourself to do just one more, one more, one more. Okay. And then you do it and you do one more and then you do it. And you're like, I got one more in the tank. I got one more in the tank. I can, I can do it. All right. You do one more. And like, you know, maybe, maybe to the point of failure, obviously you don't want to go to the failure every time, but in our business, we can go to failure every time. Okay. Maybe not physically, but mentally we can maybe go to failure one more time. Okay. You do a little bit more, you do a little bit more. Okay. You put yourself in a, what you're doing is you're literally putting yourself in a completely different mindset. And this goes back to the change in your paradigm. Like we're sometimes like, yes, review and reflection is important, is important, but if action solves a lot of problems and it's because it gives you data that you never would have had if you just were thinking all the time or not even thinking you're in your feelings. If you don't do it, if you like, just make the decision of like, I'm not going to do that. Action solves all, a lot of your problems because it literally gives you a different awareness than if you didn't do anything at all. Like, you are putting yourself in a completely different mindset. Like, can you think about it right now? Like you're, you're pushing yourself with that one more push up, that one more push up, that one more push up, however you do push ups. 
um, and you're and you're surpassing what you thought that you could do. I remember there was a point I did 60. It was like 62 or 63 pushups in a row. This was like maybe a few years ago. But I completely like blew myself out the water. I was like preparing myself. Like I was doing like 20, 40, like in a row. But I was, I remember I told Alex, I was like, I'm going to do 60 um, today at the gym. And I remember I, I did a little over 60 pushups. And I was like, I felt like I was like, just, oh my gosh, how did I even get here? But it was the little reps over time. It was like not being able to do one at one point, like literally not being able to do one pushup and just starting there. And just doing a little bit more, a little bit more, a little bit more, a little bit more. I definitely cannot do 60 push-ups now, but you get my point. At one point, I pushed myself to be able to do that. And you can do that here. It's just, it literally gives you a whole different mindset. And it's that paradigm change. And you only get there with action. So everyone on this call, if you're not doing the prospecting, if you're not putting yourself out there with your content, if you're not, you know, testing the waters, experimenting, trial and error, figuring out like what actually works, what doesn't, like getting on camera, doing the things that you don't want to do. Like you're never going to get the data. It's just like trading. Like you're not going to collect the data that you need to know that your strategy actually works. And not only that your strategy works, but all the details that go, go with it, the trade management, the risk management, your stop loss, your entry, like how you are with your emotions. You're never going to get to that level of understanding until you take consistent action prospecting every day. I don't take a trade every day, but I have the mindset that I am. Like when I show up to the chart, I'm not like, oh yeah, I got to, you know, I'm getting into a trade today because I want to. I'm wait, like, I'm looking for what the market is going to give me. But I have that, I have the mindset of like, I could take a trade. Like I'm ready. I'm ready to go. And like, that's the mindset that we need to have when it comes to our business. Okay, so you reach a totally different perspective about yourself when you just take action long enough because you're gonna like you're literally going to shock yourself. You're shocking what you're doing is you're shocking your belief system. Those limiting beliefs that keep telling you no, negative thoughts, you can't do this, I'm not good enough, you can't go no more, like this will never work. You're shocking your belief system when you just take regular, consistent, frequent action. Action solves majority of your problems. Because you're going to realize things about yourself that you never, like you didn't know just by playing it safe, just by playing in your comfort zone, just by, just by saying, just by giving an excuse, I can't do this. It's easy. That's the easy route. Okay. So um, you have the, so you're going to gain answers that you, you never had before because you went the distance you, you, you know, you had endurance, you, you, you stuck out with the pain a little bit longer. And because of that, that's suffering in suffering. I heard somebody say in suffering. Um, not that maybe you're physically suffering, but maybe like, like what you're doing is your, your limiting beliefs are kind of like dying. They're dying to your sword. Um, when, when you do that, you're literally like removing that from yourself. I forget what I was going to say, but you guys get my point. Like you're literally removing those limiting beliefs. Oh yeah. Suffering, um, suffering. There's, there's value in suffering and the value that you receive from going a little bit longer from you know, forcing your limiting beliefs not to get their way, like you are taking a stance. Um, you gain so much value from that. You gain so much perspective from that. Okay. Another great example is when you decide to, you know, um, when you want to sleep in, but you get up anyways, regardless of how tired you are. And you keep doing that over and over and over again. Like, like think about like, just think about what time, like what time you would want to get up ideally. Like we just had this conversation how this week, like I have a certain alarm set for myself, but I had so many, like long story short, I did not get up. I like slept in majority of this week and I was beating myself over the head of like, Abby, like, why are you not getting up? And I was like, literally, um, I was going back to the red light story that I had about myself, but when you stay consistent and you actually get up at the time that you said over and over and over again, what you're doing is you're literally unlocking a completely different version of yourself, but you don't really stay there. You don't become that. You don't have a paradigm change. If you only do that for a few days in a row, if you only do that for, you know, a week or so, like you have to like, like, I think they said it takes 30 days for your paradigm to start to change. Okay. Do it for 30 days. Put that number in your head and go to work. Okay. I think about 
Like, I just, I always think about mentally tough people. Like, I feel like that's why the 75 hard is so powerful because it literally forces you to go into a different mindset. Like there's no excuses. It can't, I can't go back. Um, but I think about mentally tough people. I feel like that's what the 75 hard really does and what they think about, like how they got there. Like what set of beliefs did they cultivate and carry to get themselves to think that way? I'm going to tell you it's from repetition repetition of doing the little things, doing the right things, the subtle things, the things that we overlook and underestimate over and over and over again. Okay. I want you to write this down. You will never possess what you are unwilling to pursue. You will never possess what you are unwilling to pursue. And the pursuit is the name of the game. That's what we're doing. That's why we're here. I'm not here six years later because for me, it's all about money. No, definitely not. I'm here for the pursuit. <laughs> I'm here for the endurance, the longevity, the long game, where this is going, like who I can become. So many factors in that, the impact that I can make, the value as a person that I can add to myself and therefore add to add to others. But whatever you whatever you think about that you want, you will never possess that. You will never be able to have that for yourself or not only have it because I've been places and I've lost it multiple times over. Um, you have to be able to, to pursue it. You will never possess what you're, unwilling to pers- uh, what you're unwilling to pursue. Write that down, highlight it, underline it, and just always, just always remember that when you're in your process, when you're going through it. It's a day-to-day. I'm reading my devotional here. And I love this book because every morning I read it and every night I read it. And um, he the, basically it's like quoting scripture and everything like that. But he's always reminding me in this devotional to just focus on today. Like sometimes we get so ahead of ourselves of like, you know, six months from now, next week, two months from now or like whatever. And it like ca- like it causes anxiety. It causes us to like not be present and like so many other things. And he's always just speaking to me from just focus on today. I got you today. Seek my face today. You know, don't let the worries or the troubles of the world, you know, distract you from, from my presence. And I, I know it's always like, I've been reading this for maybe six months or so, seven months or so. And it's just a great reminder to always just like, all I can focus on is today. All, all I can, all I can really do is whatever is on my plate for today, this next step, this next moment. And I think we all are Christians on this call, but God's got you every step of the way. He's actually, um, what is this? What is the quote? What is the scripture? Uh, he's ordering your steps. I just have to be willing to to take that next step, and He's going to guide us. He's going to He's going to direct us. But all I'm focusing on is today. What can I focus on today? Not the fact because sometimes we can do this. Sometimes we can get in our head of like, oh my God, I got a prospect every day for the rest of my life. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like we get in our heads and we say that but that's not going to serve us at all whatsoever. And I promise you, you won't have that mindset um, for very long. If you just do this repeatedly and you start to gain that new level of awareness, because you will really understand like what we're doing. We're coming from a place of serving people and you actually have a mission. You have a mission. And when you have conversations with people, that mission shows up in those conversations. And that's the real true reason of like why we do what we do. Um, But all all I can focus on my point in saying that is today. What can I do today? I can work out today. I can make sure I hit my go live. I can make sure I do my I, I do my back testing. I can make sure that I, I get my five to ten prospects or whatever it is. Um, I make sure I can make sure I, I put out some value. I make a post like right I'm just today. I have a plan, but I'm my focus is here today. Okay, it is the capacity. I, I love this quote from from John Maxwell. He said, "It is the capacity to develop and and improve." our skills that separate the leader from the follower. So we have all these resources, we have all this this access in front of us, but a lot of times we're not taking advantage of it and we're not using it to develop ourselves. We're not using it to improve ourselves and we're just kind of staying right here. Look, the difference between maybe where you are, I'm not saying that you guys are obviously not just followers, you're on a leadership call, but getting to that next level of actually being able to lead other people, um, like bringing on your people, having a team, so on and so forth, 
it's like the separation is in your ability to develop and improve on the skills um, that you like that we know the prospecting, the, the presenting, the promoting, the following up, the so on and so forth, right? It's being able to consistently and regularly develop and improve those skills. How do you do that? Action. It's not by doing it a couple of times throughout the week. It's every day. Everybody has 20 minutes a day to improve on the skills, improve like and develop yourself. Okay. I want you to think about, um, I want you to think about the things that you want to have and the things that you want to do. Think about the things that you want to have those, the, you know, the, the whole saying, um, whatever you want to possess, you won't be able to actually get there until you're willing to pursue whatever the path in front of you has for you. Okay. Whatever you want to have, whatever things that you want to do, I want you to ask yourself, instead of thinking about those things, I want you to ask yourself, who does that person, okay, who does that person, um, who is that person? Who, what, how does that person think? Who do you think that person um, has to be? And what do you think that person is believing? What do you think their set of beliefs are? How do you think, how, how do they think? How, are you, how do you think that they're thinking about things? Because the only reason why they have those things, the only reason why they're able to do those things is because of the way that they think, is because of their perspective, is because of how they see things, is because of their belief system. And you only develop those things when you get yourself into action every day, every day, every day, every day, no matter how I feel, no matter how I feel, no matter what's going on, no matter what my work schedule looks like, no matter what time I get off. No matter what time I wake up in the morning, if it's a bad, like if it's a quote unquote bad morning, I miss my alarm. No matter what, I still, I still, I still do these things. And what you're doing is you're literally retraining yourself. Like we know this, we're reprogramming ourselves. It says, like, I think about all the time, like all the little moments. I'm like, God, why does this like, why did I have to go through this? Why did I like the, the other day I was asking this question in my head and I was just like, that was a really dumb question thinking back. But it really gave me perspective because I finally like asked myself, why did I have that day? Like, I literally felt like there was a day over the last like couple of weeks that I had. And it was like, why did I experience that day? Like nothing, like literally nothing happened. Why did I go through that? Why did I have that day? Like literally nothing happened. And I, and it was sometimes I was, and it was funny because the next day I read in my devotional that the days where it's like, nothing's going on, it's like, like, it's just like very quiet. Like you're like, there's not really much to do. I notice on like the times where I have gap time, I look for ways to do things instead of sometimes I just need to be like quiet and sit with God and like, what is he trying to tell me? Like, what do I need to, like, what do I need? I don't need to do more sometimes in that moment. Like, but what is he trying to tell me? And he was, anyways, what I'm trying to get to is there is a certain mindset in the way that people think, and we have to go to that place. And the way that we do that is by taking consistent action. Look, all of this, all of this, we could have these calls. We could do, you know, the Saturday calls, the Monday, the Tuesday, the Wednesday, and the so on and so forth, all the go lives. Like we could have all of this stuff lined up, ready to go for us. But all this is leadership. Leadership is not taught. You guys heard this before. It's caught. Okay. And I don't really know how to give the best analogy other than how do you catch it? You show up. You show up because you have to see it. You have to see it. You catch it by seeing it repeatedly showing up, like getting in the rooms, whether it's our, you know, our, our small meetups here out in AZ or the big event events that you see in Orlando, whatever leadership and developing yourself and getting to that level of belief and thinking it's not taught like you can hear this stuff but you have to go out and apply it you have to go up you have to go out and actually see it um and show up and be in the room and get there so uh, as i said before guys we're going to kind of wrap up the call and everything but this is practice okay preparation you know i i know i said at the beginning of the call and things like that but take the time to like really understand why we're here you know why 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 you're here um, how, how you do anything is how you do everything um, at the end of the day and really preparing yourself for that next level. Like we can't lead, you can't lead a team until you can truly lead yourself. And we know this, but we don't do these things. 
And that's why we keep saying it. That's why we keep hearing it. Sometimes we do need that reminder. Um, but it's that knowing doing that gap, the knowing doing gap. It's just literally being able to to close that gap for yourself um, and, and taking the right actions. But I want to leave you guys with a couple questions. Um, I'm going to drop in the chat after this call um, some action steps going into week three. Can't believe it. We are on week three right now. Um, but I want to leave you guys with a couple questions. Number one, why? This is for you to ask yourself, okay? Why do I want to lead others? Why do I want to lead others? Ask yourself that question, okay? Second question, is the team better because I am on it? Is the team better because I am on it? Okay, and the last question, question number three, is exactly how is it better? How is the team better because you're on it? Okay, so um, that's really the call, guys. Uh, there's nothing really crazy that hopefully I said in here that maybe you already didn't know or maybe I gave you some perspective that you just didn't see it in that way. Um, this call wasn't to bring anybody's self-esteem down or anything like that. It was to empower you. It was to encourage you. It was to show you a new level of awareness um, in the way that you see yourself and how to show up to like, we know, we know to show up every day, but it's like getting to the root cause of that, the red light story, the limiting beliefs, like literally drowning out the cries of our limiting beliefs and replacing it with something that's actually empowering. Like, why do we keep telling ourselves the same story that's leaving us in the same place? Why do we get there? I promise you action's going to solve a lot. Reviewing of what you just did is going to solve a lot. Um, but most importantly, doing it consistently, okay? Doing it consistently. And just remember, like, consistency is a surface level thing. It's not really the root issue. You got to dig into why am I not consistent? Go back to the limiting belief. Go back to the red light story. That's going to give you a lot of data, a lot of information, and evidence as to why you've been being that person. Because the only way to change the paradigm is that new level of awareness. But you have to give yourself constant evidence over time to prove that you're that person that you want to be. It's kind of like uh, Alex Hormozzi said, he was like, I've built up so much evidence for myself of the person that I wanted to be that anytime doubt reigned in my face, it literally dis like it literally disappeared because I had so much evidence to lean on for that person that my doubt was telling me I no longer was. But it was like, you can't tell me anything because I've built up so much evidence for myself. So um, anyways, guys, I appreciate you. I hope you guys have an incredible Saturday, um, an incredible Saturday. And uh, you guys take care and we'll talk this week. Continue to post in the chat with the with the weekly calls. Um, and I hope to see you guys on the next Friday call. And I hope to see y'all's cameras on the next call that we do. Love you guys. Appreciate you. Talk to y'all later.